because you did mention WordPress and like, you know, Strapi being a headless CMS. I did want to take your take on WordPress, especially. I don't know if you've been following up with the drama, but <laughs> and everything that's going on. But I feel like as a freelancer, again, picking the right tool for the job, you know, and sometimes like Squarespace might be that solution. So like, what are your thoughts on like WordPress, Squarespace, other like page builder that exists versus like something that's a little bit more custom like you did with, uh, you know, Next.js and Strapi? Yeah. I absolutely have nothing against any of those um, page builders. But the main thing for me is that I, I really like developing and the experience for me, I had some clients at the beginning that had a WordPress page and I found like, yeah, you get started a lot quicker, but then if you want to do something more custom, it just gets so incredibly annoying and you interfere so often with the theme that you're picking and so on that at the end, the time you're actually saving is not that much, especially if you're quite quick at CSS and all that stuff, you can quickly do your own designs and so on. And what I also don't like, you don't have the full control, right? It's like when you build your own stuff, there's almost nothing you cannot do. But with WordPress, you will hit those those borders. So for me, something like a headless CMS plus your own JavaScript front end is my happy place, basically. Yeah. I just, I wouldn't want to spend now, I mean, I'm working now like 40 hours a week or something, right? I wouldn't spend that, you know, adjusting WordPress themes or something right. like that. Yeah. And I feel like the same because I started with WordPress and I realized just number one, keeping everything in one language, JavaScript and, you know, uh, Strapi does use React and Node and basically like, keeping it the same language makes it easier. And also when I look at Strapi, I look at it, it's like 10,000 hours somebody else did to create this thing for me that I don't have to build that I could use for free, which is amazing. And what's cool, like I, like I, I was more of a front end developer and I'm slowly like trying to become full stack, but, uh, I started trying to learn full stack by like building like node projects or using express and like that was cool. But when, uh, backend started to click for me is when I started working with Strapi and I mm -hmm. got started with Strapi like out of the box and you could just do so much. You don't need to write any custom code. But then I learned that you could customize Strapi through writing custom code or creating plugins. And then through looking through their open source code and to kind of see how they structure the project, I was like, this is how backends work. And I kind of actually learned about backend development through trying to do more custom things with Strapi. And to me now, it's like, and again, I might be biased because I work on Strapi, but uh, the way I got hired at Strapi is because I was using Strapi beforehand for everything that I was building because I loved it. But um, to me, it's like, I literally start like, what's the problem? Can I solve it with Strapi? And then most likely the answer is like, yes, I can. And so I have been, at least for the type of projects I build. And I realized like, hey, if I need an extra like functionality, like for instance, I do a lot of YouTube. So I'm very lazy at like trying to like write my descriptions for my YouTube videos or summarize my videos. So I build a plugin in Strapi where you could just put the URL of the video and it will summarize it for you and write the description right. and automatically save it to your uh, collection type. And I was like, this is amazing. And so to me, like this idea of finding a tech stack that doesn't fight you as a developer and allows you to build things quickly makes sense. And I'm happy that Strapi has been that for you as well. And another thing I was going to say with WordPress, I don't know if you experienced like when people wanted to move away from WordPress, the migration process seems to be very difficult because one of the challenges I, because uh, I tried this experiment like actually a couple of weeks ago, I realized that a lot of the data in WordPress is literally stringified HTML with the data in it. And so if you want to move that somewhere else, you got to parse that HTML, you got to take out that data. And so it becomes like a migration nightmare, except uh, this is like I thought I had and somebody confirmed it. Like I saw, I don't know if you heard of this platform called N8N. It allows, uh, it's pretty cool. You should check it out. I'll, uh, send you a link. Um, it allows you to build these automated AI workflows and it's open source. So you could like self host it. So instead of writing like custom migration scripts, like the way you would migrate like WordPress somewhere, a database migration script, or like in my case, I had to write a script that would parse the HTML and take out all the necessary data. It was a pain in the butt. They basically create a workflow where they just had a web crawler crawl the website, get yeah. all that data out, and then formatted into a CSV format that was like exactly structured the way they wanted to. And then they were able to just iterate through that CSV 
or you could do JSON and then use like Strapi API to just push the data to Strapi. I was like, wow, that's kind of cool. Like utilizing the power of AI to help you parse that data uh, is, is pretty nice. 